Hello, my name is Christian. Do you know what this is? That's right, it's a graphics card. The chip on the card is called Graphics Processing Unit or GPU in short. Its computational power increased drastically driven by the ever-increasing demand of the video game industry. It features a highly parallel structure of approximately 5000 compute cores that are capable to render a scene of a video game in real time. For comparison, a high-end CPU has currently less than 100 cores. With this tutorial, we want to introduce you to the concept of general-purpose GPU computing. We will discuss important hardware details and differences between the GPU and CPU architectures. We will show you how you can use the vast computational power of the GPU for your favorite application. It is important to understand some basic facts about the hardware design of a typical CPU or GPU. A CPU has a low amount of algorithmic logic processing units, or ALUs which, however, support a very large instruction set and are thus very versatile in usage. A CPU further features a local L1 and L2 cache and a global L3 cache and an off-chip DRAM. The whole memory architecture is latency optimized. In contrast, the GPU is built upon several sets of ALUs which share a single basic control unit and a L1 cache. These units are single instruction multiple data or SIMT units. NVIDIA calls them streaming multiprocessors. Due to the reduced instruction set, they are somewhat limited in usage, but the total amount of ALUs outperforms a typical CPU by far and delivers a vast amount of flops. In addition, there is an L2 cache and an off-chip DRAM, which is typically a high bandwidth memory. The memory hierarchy of the GPU is thus throughput optimized. Here we summarize the important hardware specifications of a CPU and GPU we will be using later in some performance analysis. Note in particular the single precision peak performance in flops and the bandwidth in gigabytes per second. How can you use the GPU for your application? It is important to identify the compute intensive parts in your program code. Provided that your problem is parallelizable, now your code is executed in parts on the CPU and in parts on the GPU, which is an example for heterogeneous computing. In order to achieve near-optimal performance, the GPU part should utilize a substantial fraction of all the ALUs available on the GPU. Due to the specific GPU architecture, the instances or threads of the kernel functions exhibit a distinct pattern. Each thread is mapped to one ALU, while a group of threads, called block, is mapped to a streaming multiprocessor. The collection of all blocks is called the grid, which is associated with the whole device. An important consequence of this classification is the fact that threads within a block have access to a shared memory, which can be used to communicate and exchange data between threads. While there is no mechanism for communication between threads, of different blocks. Now we will introduce a frequently encountered example problem, the SEXP. SEXP stands for single precision A times X plus Y, where X and Y are vectors and A is a scalar. In a series of upcoming videos, we will explain the implementation of a SEXP kernel using different programming languages and libraries. A serial algorithm will calculate one entry after another, starting with the first, 
then the second, until we arrive at the last entry. This algorithm is implemented with the for loop and is often encountered on the CPU. The SEXP problem is however fully parallelizable. Each entry can be calculated independently from any other entry. A parallel algorithm attempts to calculate all entries at once, which is much better suited if a large number of ALUs is available. However, the number of available ALUs is usually smaller than the entries of the vector, even on the GPU. In this case, one groups threads into blocks, which are then executed one after another, starting with the first block until the last block is reached. What speed up do we expect if we implement a SEXP kernel for the GPU? Let's look at some timings. Here we have modeled a sequential algorithm on the CPU and a block parallel algorithm on the GPU. Apparently, the GPU only outperforms the CPU for large problem sizes. Why is this? All memory that is processed on the GPU needs to be copied from the CPU memory via the PCI Express bus to the GPU main memory first. Likewise, all results obtained from calculations on the GPU need to be copied back to the CPU. Usually the PCI Express bus is a bottleneck that results in a large overhead for small chunks of data. Moreover, a thorough performance analysis of the SEXP kernel will show that we have to deal with a very poor flop per byte ratio, also known as algorithmic intensity. The performance of the SEXP kernel is thus limited by the bandwidth of the GPU memory. Finally, this is a list of different approaches to the SEXP implementation. We will discuss in a series of upcoming videos. Feel free to pick your preferred combination of language and API or library for your GPU programming project.